Hi, I'm Ashton, and today I want to talk about something that is important to me, and that is self-love. Specifically, this video is going to be about body positivity and a positive body image as a trans person and as a person like me, who isn't necessarily conventionally handsome. Somewhat recently, I got a comment on a picture on Instagram that really got me down for like a solid week. Um, which doesn't seem like a long time, that's not a long time, but in the context of the internet, like usually I get a hate comment and I'm like, oh, that's funny, and I screenshot it to use in a hate comments video, and then I just forget about it. But like this one genuinely hurt me because usually hate comments are like, you're, you're fucking queer, and I'm just like, yes, correct. But this attacked something that I genuinely am insecure about. And it was on this picture, which I was like confident in and I was happy about. And someone said, lose some weight. That's disgusting. You get a super expensive surgery to be able to be shirtless, but you can't even simply eat less to look good with it. Mm, there's so much to unpack there, but I'm not going to get into it. Instead, I'm going to ignore that that ever happened and uh, continue on with my life because that is a much healthier way to deal with things. I'm not going to dwell on some fat phobic ableist comment. I'm just gonna ignore it. That's my coping mechanism. But in all seriousness, losing weight is not just, just eat less. Like it's a lot more complicated than that. I don't eat a lot to begin with. I'm a vegetarian. I probably eat less than most people I know. And yet my body looks the way it does. As long as your body is healthy and as long as you are happy with your body, then you should be proud of it. Even if your body isn't healthy, health, then you should be proud of it. Like, your body does so much for you and it's important to love it and it's important to take care of it. And I'm not gonna let some asshole on the internet tell me that I need to lose weight because I know that I don't. Like, for my own health right now, I'm relatively healthy. Like, I'm fine. I don't need to lose weight and I don't need to starve myself to meet this person's standard of beautiful. Anyways, let's ignore that that ever happened and instead I'm going to give you some advice today on how to love your body and how to be more kind to yourself because it's something that I've been working on recently and it's something that I'm really passionate about and it's something that I feel is really important to your mental health. And as a trans person myself, I know that it can be really difficult when you struggle with dysphoria in the first place. But there are some things that I have been doing more recently and like learning and teaching myself that have helped me with my body image and helped me see my body in a more positive light. So I figured I would share some of those things with you. So I have created a little list for myself to talk about a few things that have helped me become more comfortable and more loving and more caring and more connected with my body. And there are things that could help you whether or not you're trans, but specifically because this is me talking from a point of view where I am trans, it may be more geared toward trans folk than cis folks, but either way, some of these things could help you. As I always say when I'm doing like mental health related videos, I'm not like a registered therapist or anything. That may be what I want to do with my future, but it's not something that I am like currently licensed in. So this is just from my perspective, this is just my advice. I am not giving you a professional advice session. The first thing and possibly the most important thing for me has been learning to control and like consciously think about who I'm following online. I've never been a person to follow giant influencers in the past, but I did make a point recently of going through my following list and thinking about, do the things that this person posts make me feel good? Do the things that this person posts improve my life in a way or make me feel like, hey, that looks like me? Or if, these, if this person's posts weren't encouraging me, inspiring me, or just being aesthetically pleasing, like I wasn't going to follow them. Like I never followed big influencers in the first place, but if you do, I would encourage you to at least mute anybody that posts stuff like sponsored by the flat tummy teas or any appetite suppressants, like stuff like that isn't gonna help you. Seeing paid for posts about like losing weight is not gonna be a great thing for your self image. And that's never something that I necessarily had to deal with because it's not the type of person that I follow. But I do like avoid the explore page a lot of times because stuff like that pops up no matter what you consume. I don't look at workout content. I don't look at losing weight content because it's not something that inspires me in a way that's healthy. I prefer to follow artists and friends and people that I care about and people that I genuinely want to see what's going on with them. Yeah, I think the big takeaway from this point is if someone you're following promotes a skinny tea or an appetite suppressant, 
I would recommend unfollowing them. Obviously, I'm not going to hack into your social media account and unfollow everybody like that, but if you do follow people like that, I would encourage you to kind of examine why. Is it because you enjoy what they usually post and this is just like a one-off sponsored post, or is it out of jealousy or out of envy or out of spite or something like that? So yeah, follow people that make you feel good. What I've found to be really helpful is following people that look like me and following people that make me feel good about my body. Body Posi Panda is great. Pixie Locks is lovely. She's not exclusively a body positive like account or figure, but she does talk a lot about it and she's also very open about mental health. She's an incredibly kind and like sweet and just warm and lovely person and following her just like inspires me a lot. Like she's great. I love her. That's enough about Jillian. Um, Annie Eleni is also amazing. She does a lot of content related around LGBT things and disability things and intersections between the two. And a lot of her content is great. And she also like will randomly post some body posy stuff that I'm just like, hell yeah, get it. I love you. You look great. They're not my friends. I don't know these people, but, but the point I'm trying to make is that following these people that not even necessarily that look like me, but that have body parts similar to mine or talk about their experiences with loving their body in a way that impacts me. That has been a much more positive thing for me than scrolling through the explore page and coming across post after post of people with flat stomachs. I would encourage you to follow people that you can compare yourself to in positive ways, people that you can look at and see aspects of yourself in, people that write things in their captions that make you feel warm, like follow people that make you feel good about yourself. And if they post pictures of their body, make sure that it's pictures that you aren't jealous of or that don't make you feel bad. It's pictures that you can look at and be like, that's a real human body. That's what my body looks like. That's what my partner's body looks like. Humans tend to compare themselves to other humans. Like it's, it's, I believe it's a part of human nature. It's something that we all do, whether we like to or not. But following a really diverse group of people in which everybody in some way reminds me of myself has made me compare myself to them in a more positive light. Like, hey, this person has stretch marks. Me too. We look great. Like, there's nothing to be ashamed of there. So that's something that's been really healthy for me and something that I would definitely recommend. Follow people that make you feel good. If you need to go through your list of people that you follow and like purge out people that just don't make you feel that way, don't feel guilty about doing that. A couple other accounts that I would recommend for body positivity are Behind the Scars, um, Salem Reed, who is a really rad trans masculine person. I believe he uses he, him. Um, but he posts like semi-explicit images. He'll do really intricate makeup, a really intricate rope bondage, and his pictures are gorgeous and they're just really like open and raw. And he also shows his chest, like he's assigned female at birth and he has a chest, you know, and he hasn't had top surgery and he just shows that and he looks so comfortable in his own body. And it just, it just fills me with so much warmth. Another piece of advice I have that is kind of easier said than done, but still something that I very often have to remind myself of is that you shouldn't feel guilty or bad for not loving your body, but you also shouldn't feel guilty or bad for loving your body. Either way, I often feel shame about it. Like when I'm in moments when I love my body, I feel guilty because I know my body isn't up to like the societal standard and I know that my body isn't everybody's cup of tea. So when I do have days or weeks or whatever that I do love my body, I often feel like, eh, I shouldn't. But on the other hand, when I am more negative about my body, I'm like, oh, I always talk about how we should all like love ourselves and be like positive about our bodies. And then I'm here like sulking because I hate how my stomach looks. Um, so I feel like hypocritical in a way, but it's important for me at least, and I feel like possibly for a lot of you guys too, to remember that you are allowed to believe in things without necessarily internalizing them yet. Like I wholeheartedly believe that body positivity is a large part of self-love and self-care for me as a trans person especially, but I'm not exactly there yet. That doesn't mean that I can't believe it's important. Just because I have bad days where I'm super dysphoric or, or days where I deal with hate comments like that, it doesn't matter. I'm still allowed to have positive days. I'm still allowed to have negative days and you are too. Committing to loving your body no matter what it looks like doesn't have to be an 100% of the time thing. That may be a goal, yes, but when you do have bad days and when you do have days where you don't feel as good, remind yourself that that's okay. You are under no obligation to feel any certain way. Some days are worse than others and you shouldn't get down on yourself just because you can't be perfectly in love with yourself every day of your life. That's all right. Never let anybody tell you that you can't love yourself, but never let anybody force you into feigning a love for yourself when you aren't ready or you aren't there yet. Let it come with time. Like, let yourself work on it. Don't feel guilty because you aren't there yet. Another thing that you shouldn't feel guilty about is body mods. 
I mean, as you might be able to tell, I personally really love body modification, whether it's piercings or tattoos. I don't have any tattoos as of right now, but I already have one planned and I'm excited. Don't feel guilty about wanting to modify your body in ways that make it feel more like yours. One of the arguments that you see a lot of the times against body modifications, especially like piercings and tattoos, is like, why would you do that to yourself? You're ruining your body. Like, how can you say that you love your body when you're piercing it and such? But like, but for me, the piercings that I have are a form of self-expression. And if anything, they're a way of me expressing my love for my body by doing something that makes me feel good and makes me feel confident. There's nothing wrong with modifying your body. There's nothing wrong with with stretching holes in your ears. There's nothing wrong with putting ink in your skin. It's not gonna hurt you any longer than like very short term. It's gonna make you look badass as hell. And if you wanna do it, don't feel guilty about that. Don't feel like I'm pressuring you into doing this. But for me, body modification has been something that has made me so much more comfortable in my own skin. I've only had my conch pierced for a bit over a week, but I already feel like I wouldn't be myself without it. When I take out my septum ring to change it, I'm like, who is this person? I don't know this person. If there are people that tell you you can't love your body if you modify it, they're wrong, okay? Maybe for them that's true, but for me and for a lot of people like me, modifying my body is a form of self-care and a form of self-expression and self-love. I feel comfortable like this, and I'm really excited to get tattoos because that's how I see myself being comfortable. I want to cover myself in art and I want to be like a modified person that can exist comfortably in a world full of other modified people and non-modified people. Like, Body modifications are a really cool form of self-expression, and if you've never dyed your hair even, that's like a super not permanent body modification, and I would entirely recommend it. Or shave your head. Like, dude, shaving my head was one of the most freeing experiences I've ever had. One of the coping skills that works best for me when I feel down about my body image or my self-image, or however you want to phrase that, is changing something. And it doesn't have to be drastic. It can be changing my plugs. It can be dyeing my hair or cutting my hair. Body modifications help me feel in control of my own body and help me express myself in a more clear way. And it's just something that I don't think needs to be seen as negative. This one is another one that's easier said than done, but it's something that my therapist talked a lot about and something that takes work, but is genuinely important. And that's appreciating what your body does. Even if you're disabled or some part of your body doesn't exactly work the way that it should, um, like for me, when I had dysphoria around my chest, looking at my chest and being like, at least I have lungs that work, probably wouldn't have been the best course of action because my lungs don't exactly work the way that they should. But my point is, appreciate the parts of your body that do their job. Like, hey, I don't like the way that my stomach looks all the time, but hey, it's digesting food. I got so many vegetables in there and it's just doing its thing. Like I got stomach acids, I got enzymes, I got all sorts of stuff going on inside of me and it's doing its job. And like my body is functioning and taking care of me just as I take care of it. Your body's worth isn't based on how well it functions and it's not based on its outward appearance, but appreciating your body for the things that it does for you can really help. Another thing that my therapist encouraged me to do was kind of self-affirmations and positive self-talk. I'm gonna use my stomach again because that's one of my biggest insecurities. So if I'm having a day where I'm like, I hate my stomach, I hate how it looks, what I would do is instead like take off my shirt, go in front of the mirror, and first look for other parts of my body around my stomach that I do enjoy. Like, hey, I have a nice ass, go me. Or like, hey, I have hair on my tummy. I love that, thank you, testosterone. Like, that's one of my favorite things, and that's on my tummy. I'd kind of work from the outside in, like if I was feeling insecure about my stomach, maybe I'd start at my shoulders and then slowly work my way down like with things that I like about my body but until I get to my stomach. And once I get there, I'd say something out loud or even just in my head that immediately, like, strictly counteracts the negative thoughts that I have. So if I'm saying my stomach is fat, I will look in the mirror and say, it doesn't matter what my stomach looks like. My stomach functions and my stomach is cute, no matter what society says about it, no matter what that one Instagram comment says about it, like I don't care. Embracing my body as it is, is a difficult thing, but slowly working up towards it with positive self-talk has definitely helped as well. This one is so important and possibly like my favorite. Um, not that like these are, favorite things at all about body positivity, but the one that has worked the most for me, and that is surrounding yourself with positive people, um, surrounding yourself with body positive people specifically. 
So this is kind of similar to the social media thing, like, hey, don't follow people that post pictures that make you feel bad about yourself. It's like that, but in real life. Don't hang around with people that make you feel bad about yourself. Don't hang around with people that are going to make fun of, of your body. Don't hang out with people that would make fun of you if you expressed insecurities. Follow people that would reassure you or encourage you when you're confident. You guys have met Taylor. She's been on my channel a couple times. She's one of my closer friends and I adore her. Like she's incredible. Even though she's off at college now and we aren't going to be going to the same school, Taylor is still one of my closest friends and she's just, such a lovely, like, pure, kind person. And something that being friends with her has taught me is that your friends can genuinely help you when it comes to body positivity. Like, she's somebody that encourages everything that I do with my body. Like, when I got my conch pierce, I immediately sent her a picture and I was like, hey, look, and she's like, oh, hell yeah, that's rad, I wanna do that next. She doesn't say rad, that's just me. Um, but you know what I mean. Like, when I shaved my head and I told her, she immediately FaceTimed me and she's like, you look adorable, I love it. Like. We just have such a positive, like, feedback to each other where it's, like, us being positive back and forth just is good for both of us. She struggled with a lot of the same things that I have in the past, and I'm not going to get into specifics because that's not my place to say anything, but she's just such a lovely person, and, like, talking to her about body positivity and about our like shared issues in the past has really helped me put things into perspective more and and when i do express confidence or when i do express happiness with how i look she encourages that she doesn't take that away from me she talks to me in a way of like yeah i'm glad you're feeling confident you're doing awesome as opposed to negativity or anything along those lines like surround yourself with people like taylor is what i'm saying be friends with taylor i love taylor <laughs> all that applies to ollie too both of the ollies that have been on my channel the friend group that i've like culminated, collected for myself. That feels really reductionist, but the genuine true friends that I have, I feel like we have a positive feedback loop where we encourage each other. And when it comes to more sensitive issues about our bodies or about our past struggles, it's like, it's just very wholesome and encouraging each other is a really great thing. I don't even know how to fully express it, but find good friends that you can feel comfortable talking about anything with, and that might not happen immediately. It can take some time. I didn't genuinely have friends like that until high school. A lot of people in high school will continue friends with from middle school, but I genuinely have zero friends that carried over from middle school. Trans problems. I've genuinely met people in high school that I adore, and the fact that I'm able to maintain friendships with them even when they're away at college and I still have another damn year of high school, like, it's still a very healthy friendship and I really appreciate being able to talk to them about stuff like body positivity and having such like a positive, genuine connection where I can feel comfortable being confident and being happy with myself. My boyfriend has been another huge part of that and I'm gonna talk about that a bit later, but um, relationships and friendships of course are different. And even though I do consider Jack my best friend, be because for me, I feel like if you're dating somebody like in a long-term serious relationship like Jack and I are in, they should be your best friend. Like, I, I just feel like that's the healthy way to do it. And I know not everybody considers it that way, but for me, that's the way that I see it. Anyways, my point is being in a relationship with Jack has also helped in a similar way where like, when I do have confident days, he encourages me. And when I do have days where I'm down on myself, he'll still encourage me and he'll still compliment me and make me feel good about myself when I can't provide that for myself. Build healthier relationships reflect on the relationships that you have with people, relationships including friendships, and genuinely look at them in an outsider's point of view. Like, are we helping each other? Is this person helping me? Is this friendship something that is benefiting both of us? And if not, it might not be the right friendship for you, and that's okay. It can take a lot of trial and error to find the right group of friends for you, and of course, like, the friends that I have now might not be my friends for the rest of my life, but regardless, the friends that I have now are genuinely good for me and and I genuinely enjoy their companionship and spending time with them and I feel like I can be myself around them, which I know doesn't sound like body positivity, but it can translate into that and encouraging each other in all aspects of your life and your personality can also translate into body positivity. I know I can't just give you the advice of make good friendships because it's really vague and it's not that simple, but it is something that when you work on that and when you create better and healthier relationships with your peers, it is something that can help you. All right, my last point is going to be NSFW. So if that's not your thing, you can click out of the video here. That's why I saved this one for last, so that you can get all of my advice and then just not hear about sex. But my last bit of advice does have to do with sex, so if you don't want to hear me talk about that, 
then you can click off now, you don't have to listen to it, this is your warning. Obviously, if you're young or if you're not ready to talk about or have or like engage in sexual ways, don't listen to me. Don't use this part of a video as advice. This is just my experience with sex and body positivity and like how it's helped me and how I feel like it may help others. But if you're underage or if you're not being safe, then don't do this. Like this part is not for you. This is for people that are safe and comfortable with sex and are emotionally, physically, in all senses of the word, ready. Don't force yourself into anything for the sake of body positivity or sex positivity. Like, do things because you want to and you are safe doing them. That's my disclaimer for this section. It's gonna be NSFW from this point forwards. That's your disclaimer. Be safe, I love you. If you're clicking out now, goodbye. Have a lovely day. Or if you know me in real life and you like don't wanna hear me talk about sex because you'll see me in Wind Ensemble tomorrow and this is awkward, then like, just just click out now. You don't have to listen to this. For a lot of trans people, like including myself, this is a more difficult topic, but I do enjoy penetrative sex and that's not a bad thing and that doesn't make me any less trans, but my point here is about body positivity, so that's not what I'm gonna talk about. It doesn't even have to be sex, but being in a healthy, intimate relationship has been incredibly good for my body image and my body positivity self image. It can be so, so affirming to be wanted and loved and to just have that dynamic where you can talk about literally anything with your partner comfortably and be intimate physically comfortably and know that they're comfortable with your body and you're comfortable with theirs and it's just like this really close loving relationship and, and I know that's not something that you can just do to feel better with your body but having sex in a healthy, safe way can be really, really positive. And I know firsthand that a lot of people see it as a negative thing or a shameful thing, but it doesn't have to be. Communicating with your partner your boundaries and what you like and what you don't like and what you like being called can really, really be helpful. Being able to be intimate with my body as it is, like with scars, with me being trans and with me not being incredibly skinny has been really affirming in the way that I still feel loved and I still feel wanted and I still feel safe and like protected regardless of my body and it's made me appreciate my body so much more being able to do those things and being able to be intimate with the way that I am regardless of how I look or regardless of my outward appearance like it's helped me associate like afab parts of me with me being a boy because being called a pretty boy or a good boy well that's associated with like the afab genitals or like my hips or my ass which are like all you know very assigned female at birth aspects of myself connecting those things with gendered words that i'm comfortable with has been amazing and like being praised and being told that i'm beautiful in ways that i could never see myself as has been incredibly impactful on my body image in a really good way. And there might be a little bit TMI, there might be a little bit like a lot more than you needed to know, but it is something that I wanted to share like body positivity wise, because that is something that can be really, really helpful. And I feel like it's not something that everybody recognizes as something that can be incredibly helpful body positivity wise. And yes, everybody does have their own experiences with their own bodies. And this might not be something that does help everybody, but it is something that has helped me more than I thought it would. And oh, look at my dog's paw. Aww. Being in a loving, communicative, happy relationship, whether it's gay or polyamorous or monogamous or all of the other infinite ways of being in a relationship can work, can be really healing and it, of course it's not the same for everybody and everybody has to take everything at a different pace but as long as everything is healthy and safe and consensual and fun you can experiment as much as you want and you can explore your own body in ways that you didn't think you could and it can be really healing to have like a sense of ownership over your own body that you couldn't in the past because of your negative self-image or even because of dysphoria and sex can be really healing in that way as can like even non-sexual intimacy that has been something that has definitely helped me with my body image so that is something that i wanted to share as a bit of advice like if that's something that you can do if that's something that you want to do if you're comfortable with doing it then i definitely would encourage talking to your partner or seeking out a partner and just doing whatever makes you comfortable and just be safe and healthy and consensual and everything will be just fine. 
But this is not Ashton's sex advice video. This is Ashton saying, hey, intimacy can really help with your body image and you should be open to trying that. So yeah, that is all the advice that I have for today. If this is something that helped you, feel free to let me know. Or actually, this is a better thing to say. If you have advice on self-love and body confidence for others or for me, leave it in the comments. I would love to hear what you guys do to feel more comfortable with your own bodies. I think that'd be a great discussion. Let's do it. Give me your advice. Tell me what makes you feel comfortable. I love that. And I hope that all of you are in love with your body as it is. And I hope that you are all healthy and having a great day. Um, yeah, I love you. <laughs> Goodbye. I hope that you are comfortable with where you are, and if you are not, then I hope you can learn to become more comfortable with yourself as you are. I love you. Goodbye. I'll talk to you later, maybe.